Good evening, everyone. Um, and apologies, I, I, I didn't intend to come between the high tea and uh, my, my thoughts, but unfortunately, my session has been planned that way. And before I even start sharing what I feel about Web 3.0, I want to start with a disclaimer that I am not the expert. I am, in fact, one of the impacted parties, right? Impacted as a consumer and impacted as a leader because not only I have to adjust as a consumer, but I have to adjust, adapt to this new reality and drive my business, my team and my organization to create value out of it. Because the whole idea is that how do we leverage this new revolution to create value for organizations and as I heard from some of the esteemed panels, convenience for the consumer. So that's the fine line that we all need to travel. Now before, uh, you know, uh, I could say something, when I was looking at Web 3.0, I think, you know, it is imperative for all the organizations to actually adapt to this new development or trend. Why? Because the three key pillars on which this entire Web 3.0 is, is being based is decentralization, transparency and security. And in my own opinion, uh, if, I, if I look at uh, security, one of the concerns with all the digital platforms and with a lot of consumers and customers is the security of their personal data and also their own privacy. So I think one of the things that this is going to solve is this aspect, which I am very, very confident because now it is not going to stay with few bigger players, but it is going to get decentralized. But at the same time, it puts a lot of responsibility on a lot of organizations and other other, other players. And second, uh, I think uh, as far as transparency is concerned, um, you know, for me, uh, how I see it is like the availability of information and sharing of information will become easier and also the authentic of the info information. Sometimes we really doubt whether the information provided to us is being right or wrong. So these are two pillars which where I don't see uh, any friction or any, any, any tension. So I will not speak about them. Where I see majority of the tension and as an organization or as, as a consumer is we say that uh, Web 3.0 is more efficient. And when we say Web 3.0 is more efficient, we say for example, that today as an organization, if I'm interacting with the consumer, I need a third party to do my transaction as far as payment and all is concerned. While, you know, if I look at an NFT marketplace or anywhere, I can actually remove those intermediaries. So it becomes more efficient. Now, the moment it, it says I remove intermediaries, right? And uh, no offense to anyone, actually it is like hearts, hearts in my eyes because I see cost, right, savings. So I don't have to pay, I don't have to shed. But is that really going to happen? Uh, I personally believe yes. But is it really convenient to the consumer? I don't have an answer. And I would be very, very honest in, you know, submitting that. And... That's why when I look at Web 3.0 and when we say that we have to create value out of Web, Web 3.0, the first and the most, I would say, dreadful experience that comes to my mind is it should not become another IVR, right? And IVR and this has no, no, no relation. But if you look at IVRs, when IVR started, we said we can reach out to more consumers. There is cost efficiency and you all are consumers. And Trust me, the moment if I call up a call call center and they put me on the IVR, the first reaction is, oh my God, right? Now, we don't want that. If we, if we don't want, if we, if we, if we really don't want an, another experience like, like, like that, then we need to deep dive into how, what is actual convenience for the consumer. Another example from my industry is, uh, there is a lot of talk about AI or Aut automation or a lot of things into products also. So I was just talking to some of the consumers and we have a brilliant product called Mixer Grinder. Uh, it's not glamorous, but trust me, uh, your life will get impacted if your mix Mixer Grinder doesn't work properly, right? So normally this is, this is why we say all the good things are not glamorous, huh? they, they, are, they are actually there. So when, when you talk to a consumer who's using a Mixer Grinder, wherein the 
maximum time of an application is not more than one minute. So you actually use a mixer grinder for 30 seconds, 40 seconds, one minute. If you are doing some very hard grinding, two minutes, right? Now, does the consumer really requires an AI or does the consumer really requires a mixer grinder which doesn't require supervision? Now, these are questions that we have to ask. And why I'm giving you this example is because I think the topic here was, you know, how do we create value out of three point, web 3.0? Uh, and as I started saying, I don't have the answer, I only have questions. So I will leave you with, with, with questions rather than answers. Right? So this is another example which, which comes to my mind. But at the same time, there is an example which comes to my mind, which is chat GPT. Right? Phenomenal. And I never attended a session or a seminar or a workshop or an event which said, let's discuss chat GPT. But look at the content it throws at you. Now, if the content is good, if it is solving some of your pain points, it automatically becomes popular and it, it, it becomes a part of our life. And maybe, you know, whomsoever is the founder of ChatGPT or the organizations related to that may be minting money very, very soon. So that's the, that's the question that, 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 that I, at least I have. Because when we are saying that we will make our interaction with the consumers and customers more efficient. We remove the intermediaries. The consumer becomes more closer to you. The customer becomes more closer to you. But it is a huge responsibility on the shoulders of the organization. Today I can, you know, put the blame on some of the intermediaries. Tomorrow I will not have anyone to put the blame on. But at the same time, it's a great opportunity that I can actually be as close as possible with my customers and with my consumers. And I can actually give them the surety of security of their data, knowing them better, getting more, more, more insights. So on that thought, uh, my whole point of view or my whole thought process at this point of time with Web 3.0 is as follows. I think for organizations, for professionals, uh, because it's on one hand it's the organization, on the other hand we all are professionals and we want to stay relevant. So if we want to stay relevant, we need to understand it more deeply. And when I say that, it is not the skill set, it is the mindset. See, it is very easy to follow a fashion, but to understand that, to have you know, actually making it meaningful for yourself is very, very important. And that's why I personally believe that there would be a lot of value from Web 3.0 because I, I am a, I would say I am a sold out party on decentralization of data. I completely believe that there is a humongous power of transparency. And I think if whatever I am hearing if it resolves the concerns on security, because security and privacy is something which is a very, very big concern today. So all the three pillars are at the right place, but how do we understand those pillars, have the mindset to adapt those as per the requirement of our consumers, as per the requirement of our own organization, our industry and our value space, and then create solution, then only we will be able to create value in my head. And so that's only the what part of it. How, I am still to figure out. So that's why uh, as the audience and you know, I would actually encourage uh, all of you that if you, if, if you get the answer of the next two questions that I have, please do share it with me because I am also struggling with those questions. So uh, <laughs> the first question that I have is, uh, what is the readiness check or what is the readiness checklist for my organization to say, I am ready for web 3.0. Forget about being the expert, creating value or something. I am currently looking at a readiness checklist for an organization to saying, these are few of the aspects that I need to have in place to be ready or to be capable of using this phenomenal revolution for my organization and for my consumers. 
and i think that requires a lot of change in the mindset because when when i when i when i look at some of the young digital talent also they believe that they know it all they know it all from a skill set point of view absolutely in alignment but i think every situation every business every consumer is different and that's why the mindset and the checklist is important to figure it out the readiness and the second is definitely on the personalization front because i think web 3.0 talks a lot around personalization in the past also we have talked a lot around personalization i think this is one puzzle uh, where we have very very few very good examples otherwise what happens is on your uh, sms if you if you if you if you get an sms saying instead of dear customer saying dear mr torani uh that's personalization i don't think that's personalization the personalization is understanding me and actually taking any of my pain points so i think that's the second question that i have in my mind that how can we use this revolution to actually crack the puzzle of pers personalization because personalization in my industry in my space and in a lot of space is a big opportunity which organizations and businesses should leverage so that's the two question that i have and that's the that, that's the little bit about web 3.0 that i know and i am trying to figure out for myself and for my organization and i will invite all of you that if you if you have any any great solutions please do reach out to me i am i am here in the evening and and then later on also with that uh, thank you very much for the patience listening and apologies once again for coming between your tea and and this sessions thank you very much thank you